In this video, we are going to study the uniaxial strain measures. If I have a bar of length L0, and then it changes in length and becomes L, and this L could be greater or smaller than L0, I would like to come up with measures that define the strain of this bar. First, I'm going to define the stretch ratio, which is equal to L over L0. There are three measures of strain that I can use to define the strain of this bar. There are other measures, but in this course we're only going to talk about those three different measures. The first measure is called the engineering strain. The engineering strain is equal to the change in length divided by the original length, so L minus L0 divided by L0, L over L0 is equal to lambda, and L0 over L0 is equal to 1, so the engineering strain is equal to the stretch ratio lambda minus 1. The true strain is equal to len L over L0, which is equal to the natural logarithm of lambda. The green strain is equal to half L squared minus L0 squared divided by L0 squared, which is equal to half lambda squared minus 1. There is one thing common about all these strain measures. If L is equal to L0, which means that lambda is equal to 1, all these strain measures are going to give me zero strain. Each measure has its advantage and disadvantage. One advantage of the true strain measure is that it's additive. So if I have three states, in the first state a bar changes its length and becomes L1, and in the second state it changes its length and becomes L2, then I can calculate the strain between the state 1 and state 2, or between state 2 and state 3, or between state 1 and state 3, and then if I use the true strain uh, measure, then it becomes a very simple calculation as we will see in the next slide. If I call the strain from L0 to L1, if I call it epsilon 1, this is equal to the natural logarithm of L1 over L0. The strain between this state to this state is equal to epsilon 2, is equal to the natural logarithm of L2 over L1. The true strain between the final state and the original state is equal to the natural logarithm of L2 over L0. Because of the properties of the natural logarithm function, I can multiply by L1 and divide it by L1. From the properties of this function, this is equal to the natural logarithm of L2 over L1 plus the natural logarithm of L1 over L0. So the final strain is actually equal to epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. Now if you try this same calculation using any of the other strain measures, you're going to find that they are not additive. On the course website, there is a tool that given lambda, it will give you the value of the different strain measure. And you can see here, the engineering strain is linear because the engineering strain is actually equal to lambda minus 1. The green strain is usually higher and the true strain is usually lower than the engineering strain. And right around when lambda is equal to 1, right around there, all the three strain measures give you a similar value. The deformations are not usually as simple as just a bar whose length changed. For example, if you look at the two pictures here, you have a reference configuration, a bar drawn with some vertical lines, and a deformed configuration, the bar after deformation with uh, vertical lines, and you could see that I've shown this deformation is non-uniform. The strain or the distance between the vertical lines on the left hand side, they stayed the same, but as we go to the right hand side, the distance between the vertical lines has increased. Which means if I calculate the strain in this area, it's going to be different from the strain in this area. Because the strain in this area is almost zero, there's really no change in length, but as I move to the right hand side, there is an increase or local increase in the length. And so I need a local strain measure rather than a global strain measure. Rather than saying the total length minus the total length, which is a global strain measure, I need a local strain measure. And so in this case, the question is, what is the stretch ratio? How can I calculate lambda in this case? So in this case, I want to calculate lambda locally. So I calculate lambda by taking a small delta x, which is basically just this small delta x, and divided by capital delta x, and take the limit as delta x goes to zero. 
which is basically partial f by partial x and f is the function that maps from the reference configuration x to the deformed configuration small x. And you have an online example that shows you how this can be done. In these cases, the strain equations are still the same. Epsilon engineering is equal to lambda minus 1. Epsilon true is equal to uh, the natural logarithm of lambda. Epsilon green is equal to half lambda square minus 1. But instead of using the global length, we're using a local measure of change of length, which is lambda or the stretch ratio, which is calculated by the differentiation of f with respect to capital X.